Bingo. Welcome everybody to an episode of Rare Gems and Cuts. I'm your host, Cliff B. And this is an opportunity for me and my guests to share and testify about their love of music, their joys, their experiences, and the power of music. So without any further ado, let me introduce this gentleman that I have here to, I guess it's my left. I don't know what, you know, we're in cyberspace, so he's, he's to the side of me here. Um, and let me, let me start with his intro here, okay. This gentleman, first and foremost, his claim to fame is he's a great father, he's a great husband, he's a songwriter, he's a producer, lyricist, and an integral part of the group, the phenomenal group, the classic group, the iconic group, Earth, Wind, and Fire. So ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let me introduce my man, Mr. John Parrish. Yeah, <laughs> I play, Mr. B. I play. I Thank you so much, man. man. Thank you, man. This is a joy, true joy. Great, man. Great. Yes. So yeah, for for people that don't know, you know, we're gonna get into Earth, Wind, and Fire, but the the whole purpose of Rare Gems and Cuts is just for John and myself and my guests to just kind of kick about the importance of music. You know, from a therapeutic standpoint, from just the love of music, just you know all those things that music brings to all of us you know what i mean and i know john you you know you you get you sit in the back you're in the back so sometimes you just you know you're doing your thing all the time you know so that's why i wanted to bring you forth and just kind of share your story a little bit oh, with the sure. world your joys your you know beyond beyond the earth wind and fire thing but we you know we're going to talk about that so we got a lot of ground to cover man you know what i mean because i got a lot of things you want to share and, and we're going to share them together you know what i mean so how are you doing today man Man, so good, man. It's all good, man. I'm taking it in, you know, this time, you know, uh, uh, what they call a mandatory isolation. It's been yeah. great self-reflection and just getting back into, you know, appreciating, you know, the gifts, you know, other than just, you know, what we've been able to do with music, traveling and all that, man. It's just so much more to those things that we take for granted that goes into our music. So, uh, you know, just appreciating it, man, getting into that and uh, enjoying it, man. You know, it's not all like, oh, oh, oh my, not, you know, I, of course, I love people. I love being around folks. But um, it's been um, a great time for repair, mm -hmm. you, you know, spiritually and physically, man. So it's been all right, actually. It's been yeah. For me. So, so, so obviously, I mean, I know that being on the road a lot, you know, you, you you sound like you've had a lifetime of just kind of traveling around and moving around, and just being on the move. Sometimes that can be really constraining having to be in the house right now, you know. So, but it's it's you're working you're working it out all right, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, I it's am. Good, man. Yeah, yeah, That's it's good. it's good, man. You know, it's like like I was saying, um, you know, observing the amazing woman that my daughter is is growing into, man. Just you know, uh, she's gonna con contribute to society in the world in a, in a positive way. And that's the thing that I'm most proud of out of anything that I've been involved in. That's an honor. That's fantastic, man. That's good, man. That's good. You've been on the road a long time, huh? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, so, so tell tell everybody, give us you know, like a kind of brief synopsis, man. I know you've been, your resume is just too huge and I can't even really compile it into just a really capsule, but just give me a little bit of background about yourself, man. You know, your upbringing and stuff. It's really humbling just hearing that, you know, uh, because there's so many more things that I would love to do and things that I didn't, I didn't get able, wasn't able to do. But um, I, I started actually traveling, um, man, maybe 83-ish, 84, and um, till now, you know, and everything in between. But before that, you know, there was a lot of, uh, uh, you know, gigs around town that were crucial to most of our uh, preparation to get ready to do what we're getting ready to do. We mm -hmm. played around town locally so much that we were ready. When we got the call, we were eager, you know. So if it happened to be a name or someone that was you know, had huge notoriety. We weren't really nervous about it because we had done it so much previously. And in the Bay Area, I imagine like uh, 
any any major other major city in the world had a lot of uh, competition and the criteria was extremely high, especially being such a, a diverse city, you had to be extremely versatile yeah. in everything, you know what I'm saying? Because they were going to yeah. let you know. So that that's what I think the, the, the blessing was of um, coming up in the, in the 60s and, you know, <clears throat> early 70s. The radio wasn't as genderized as, as it is now. You know, you could listen to a popular station. I came up in New Jersey, so we would get some of the, you know, music from New York and other surrounding areas and um, from Trenton and Freehold. And we heard everything. That one station would play, cover it all, you know, from country, mm -hmm. rock, gospel and the quartet stuff, anything that you can imagine, classical. It was, if it was popular or any, a lot of folks liked it, you heard it. So by the time I came to the Bay Area, you know, being exposed to such uh, high high level of um, uh, different types of music was was normal, you know. So, like, we, what, hey, John, what kind of what kind of things were you like specifically? What were you listening to, man? Is it things that your parents were playing, or you? I mean, I know you said you heard it on the radio and stuff, right? But specifically, what kind of things were you listening to, man? That really made you like go, oh, wow. Well, my parents listened to a lot of jazz. And there was a club up the street that that had, you know, everybody came through. So, you know, the, the jazz stuff, I mean, it would be like people like, you know, Charlie Erling, Jimmy Smith, Pat Martino, you know, those kinds that didn't really get the notoriety that say maybe the uh, Herbie Hancock's or the George Benson. Right. right. Um, you know, we had all those records. I actually found a record, a CD that my mother owned you know, back in the day, just, just so I could have it and listen to it. Mm -hmm. uh, most of the jazz stuff, you know, my father, he, he, you know, he thought he was Billy Eckstein, you know, he had that deep, deep baritone voice, you know, and he liked all that kind of stuff. Right. And cool beneficial thing about that, all the, the uh, big bands that were supporting those, you know, Ella Fitzgerald and, you know, Sarah, uh, Pearl Bailey, you know, Louis Belson was playing drums for her. You know, Buddy Rich and all these, I mean, these in phenomenal, all the legends, you know, that, 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 you know, we loved were playing behind these singers. So that criteria was set from big bands. I'd heard people that, you know, would later become, you know, our legends that had, had no clue were supporting these singers. So from that, you know, I'd bounce back and forth to my grandmother's. There was the Motown stuff, all of that. Mm -hmm. Brown, my uncle loved the Beatles and Zeppelin. You know, my eldest uncle, he was into Miles, you know, so I heard a lot of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so, you know, Charlie Pride would pop up, Carpenters, mm -hmm. harmonies, you know, uh, and the, uh, the voicings that I was exposed to at an early age, you know, and coming up in church, I was in the choir nudging people because I didn't want nobody to think I was singing flat. Oh my God! My aunt told me that story the other day. You think, I, you're singing for that? I could yeah, hold on, hold on. Let, let me let me get you right here. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Uh oh. Let me see. Let me see if you're in key here. I don't know, man. You're a drummer. You don't know about that, right? Hey, that's A. That's A, right? Uh, hold on, hold on. Yeah, you're I, right, man. I cheated. That's good, man. Cars right here. Yeah. I cheated. <laughs> <laughs> I know you. You used you used to this, man. You used to this, like one, oh. two, three, four, right? You're not yeah. used to the key thing. <laughs> what kind of sticks you got over there, man? What is that? man? I don't know. Power, <laughs> power tip, man. Power oh. tip, man. Okay, we love the power. That's, yeah. that's, what, that's what you used to, man. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, go ahead, man. That's yeah, go ahead. <laughs> so yeah, so anyways, back to back to you. You 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 didn't really have that ear thing, huh? Yeah, I could hear it. You just have to tell me what I would I would know, you know, if it was a you know not in the right key, but I could tell you, no, it's an eight flat or eight, you know, I could you know like that technically. Right, right. Being exposed to all that good great stuff, you know, without anybody going, no, this is that, this is that, we're putting this here, putting that there, pop, rap, gospel, you know, everything was just like if it's good, we're playing it in our house. Yeah, yeah. I got to home, to uh, to the bay and had opportunity to play. Man, you know, 
there was a specifically there was a most of these clubs that you know were hiring that really could you know pay you decent money required you to play Tuesday to Saturday Tuesday to Sunday and um, anybody would come through there mm -hmm. sometimes it would be you know a lot of R&B crowd a lot of rock crowd a lot of I mean you know so you'd have to go from Rick Springfield to Parliament authentically or that other band was coming in there, you know, it was, right, right. but you know, they was still coming for the chair. <laughs> so right, right. you had to uh, really study, um, like for instance, reggae, or, you know, there's, there's a specific feel for that and you cannot fake it. Same thing with mm -hmm. swing, a lot of people ting, 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 you know, but they don't have the language of it. So if you didn't come in there, and give it the real, especially for a drummer, and give it the real feel of whatever that tune was that we were doing. Uh, you go from Three Little Birds to Tear the Roof Off from Parliament. It had to be, you know, that. So that was a blessing, man, you know, coming up in that. Cause I wasn't, I wasn't afraid of it or it didn't intimidate me at all. Cause it was yeah, yeah. DNA. Yeah, the yeah. Um, so, in terms of, in terms of like the beat and your drumming what was the first record or group or artist you heard to really inspire you just kind of just grab you in there and just like wow i want to i want to do this what well, you know did you have a like a musical moment where it was just like ooh yeah yeah i mean there 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 was uh several that i constantly paid attention to you know I was like man this is sounds incredible this is fun and you know my ear you know would always be pulled in by the rhythm of percussion or something and I mean you know the Afro-Cuban stuff was playing uh you know go to the fish market and you would hear all kinds of see you messing me up now oh man yeah like Mongo Mongo, Mongo. And I heard all of that, didn't even know who it was and was loving yeah. it. But when I heard Mr. Brown flip that beat like he did in Cold Sweat, mm -hmm. that was it. That was yeah. it. Because, I mean, you know, if you think about in that period, uh, that's 60s, right? Uh, 60 what? Um, 67. 60, about 67. Yeah, I yeah, think it's 67. It's still you know kind of motownish yeah and yeah it said i was like wait wait a minute i mean i didn't get past the first couple of bars and right. it happened to my body you know it was like you know the spirit in church when you fall out it was almost that impactful it was that wow. it, it, wow. it disrupted my whole chi man i'm like okay what is that i yeah. can so you know you know john john I'm, I'm gonna tell you something man james has had that effect on a lot of people man and musicians and people alike you know because i had i had the same kind of effect the first time i heard it uh, like this is this is my first record you know yeah. my first 45 you, and you have to you have to flip it to part two to get to yeah. the good part right you know what i mean right. and for those of you, yeah and, and you got to know what this is too right you got if you don't know what that is well we'll tell you later right but you got to flip it to part two and that's kind of how it affected me too man like you you saying it was like wow man dude i was riding down the street and i heard it on the radio and it was like a brick hit me in my head man i'm like dude what what was that man I was like, just like you, man, and he's had that effect. Cause, like you said, he took the he took the the beat and put it on the one, and that just uh, that changed everything, didn't it, huh? Yeah, man. But so did the brick sound effect. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> that changed everything. He just took it to <laughs> <Wait a minute. laughs> oh. That's how I felt, man. I I remember, man. I was listening to that little that AM radio W O L, and I was like. Ooh. Whoa! What? What? Whoa! What was that? You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Seriously, man. Seriously. More of uh, um, uh, not intricate. What's the word I'm looking for? Syncopated. After yeah. that, and, and it yeah. got more interesting to me because you know I'm a, also a guitar freak. You know, my aunt used to play guitar, and I used to pick the yeah. guitar, the bass lines, or whatever. 
And so I was tuning into that and noticed how rhythmic it was and how all the parts fit together. And it was like a, a chant type of thing. They would play this thing over and over and over and somehow it just grew and grew and grew. Which, Absolutely. which that, you know, you know, the percussion element back to the drums, you know, most, most uh, of your bass of your percussion ensembles are repetitive. And you have some language outside of that, that someone will be speaking, but the most, the, the part that we, you know, grab a hold to is the part that's repetitive and you can ride that thing and ride it and ride it. And that's what Mr. Brown did with his music. You yeah, know? absolutely, absolutely. Together to make it real uh, infectious and a group, the energy just like would grab you by the neck. Yeah, you know, on that note too, man, I don't know if you knew this brother that was in Washington, D.C. A brother, he used to play percussion with uh, Gil Scott here, and he's not living now, Barnett Williams, right? Oh, yeah. And okay, well, Barnett was a percussionist, man. And one of the things that he told me a long time ago about the beat, there are certain African rhythms that you play that just make you move. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's rhythm, that's the beat, you know? Because rhythm is the heartbeat too, isn't it, John, right? It's the heartbeat, it's the pulse, right? Yes. And, and, and I'm from Washington, D.C., man. And the thing, the thing that's that that really synonymous with D.C. is go-go. Come on. Come right? on with Come okay, on. so the thing about go-go, man, I'm telling you, you're not human if you don't hear go-go beat and you can't move. Hey, What's wrong with you? <laughs> it's, yeah. it's, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not pushing it. It's just there's something just that comes over you and you just gotta move, you understand? Yeah. It's yeah. that beat, and that's exactly what you're talking about, right? Yes, sir. And, 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 and James, James, what he did is he took not only the drummer, but he took the horn section, he yeah. took the guitar section, and so everything is like a beat, right? Yes, yes. That's, yeah. where, that's, that's, where, that's, where, that's what, what got you, huh? That yeah, got yeah. you, huh? Right away, right away, and before, um, you know, um, I don't know when I actually got exposed to go go, but that's what I felt. It felt real tribal to me, and I yeah. love the feel of it because that's another thing that you can't, you know, just get up there. Oh, I like it. Let me try to. No, you got to really feel. You know, the word that you use is opera. It's got to be authentic, man, or they're kicking you out of the band. Yeah, but, true. But our guy Ricky, Ricky Wellman. You know, Ricky. No, I don't know Ricky. No, uh-uh, uh-uh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Brown. And um, I knew who he was a long time ago because I, you know, I was feeling busting loose and all of that. Yeah. <laughs> but he took it to another level, you know, and mm -hmm. got real, man, it just it just went someplace else. And so I, I got to meet him uh, later on when he began to play with Miles. Mm -hmm. And that stuff he was on had that swing to it, had that mm -hmm. little feel if you think about it you know miles loved it and 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 um even live he would play uh but it was a song that one but it mm -hmm. ricky would be back there doing that real mm -hmm. so he exposed a whole another genre to the go-go swing right out of dc so mm -hmm. And Juju for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Amen. Amen, man. It's still there. It's still there. Listen, I when I when I go Gogo has even taken another turn because I've seen videos, you know, Gogo is, is a really big synonymous thing with the Washington DC area, the African American community. But I've seen things on YouTube where I've seen white people going go go. Yeah. Go go. It's that rhythm, man. It's rhythm. It's it's the heartbeat. You know what yeah. I mean? Exactly what you said. If you got a soul, it's moving you. It's gonna yeah. move. You. It's yeah. a you know first form of communication, and that part of it has is has been untainted still, which I'm so grateful for. Music can transcend all this silliness right now that we're going yeah. through. Yeah, absolutely. With percussion and drums, and you got them. Once yeah. They yeah. Absolutely. That's that's the love. That's the love and the joy. That's the love and the joy of music, man. It just it transcends all boundaries. You know yes. what I mean? It really does. You know what I mean? And like music for me, is it's either good or it's bad. I, I either like it or I don't like it. You that's know what it. I mean? That's it. Cate you know, cate categories, obviously, 
really redirect our, us as humans when we categorize things. Are you black? Are you white? Are you, you know, is it jazz? Is it, it, it you know, it, 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 you know, it used to be urban, you know, soul music. I mean, I have mine categorized here. I got 8,000 records behind me. I got 8,000, so I can't just throw them all here randomly. You know what I mean? So I got to know. So that's why category works for me, man. But, you know, it's, yeah. it's, that's, that's, that, that category thing, man, can really destroy people sometimes, you know? Yeah, yeah I always, you know, had a, had a huge problem with that. And, and, you know, we'll get to this later, but our brothers that's on the wall behind you, you know, Maurice, you know, was, was not uh, timid with the introduction of African rhythms, the, you know, the kalimba, the African thumb piano, yeah. you know, phrases and stuff. And, you know, our, our white brothers and sisters come out to see it. They yeah. come out, you know, everybody yeah. come to see that. So you, you're absolutely right, man. You know, there's just like, it, there's really no room for that at all. Yeah. You know, and yeah. you could start, you know, uh, possibly introducing that fact through music like we used to do. But you know, if it's good, people will yeah. come. Yeah, yeah. And, and speak, speaking on that, man, I don't think, I, I, you know, I know God, God rest his soul, brother Maurice. You know, I don't think a lot of people. Well, I, I won't say that. A lot of younger kids really know about how he came up. You know, through the ranks, right? You know, like I'm sure, I'm sure that your mom and dad were listening to like Ramsey Lewis, Sorry. right? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Ram Ramsey Lewis was big in my house, you know what I mean? And obviously, there he is. There he there is. is. You know what I'm saying? Right there. And, <laughs> you know, and props to him because obviously, you know, the, where your spot right now originally was held by him, at least in the studio, correct? Yeah, I had, I just had to take that in for a second. Yeah, every time people say that, it messes me up. Yeah, but, man, that's oh. deep, man. Yeah, that was your spot, man. That that that's that's where you, you sit. You you sitting in some big shoes, man. Huge, huge. Never to be yeah. feel admired, you know, and appreciated, and that's what we all did. You know, we we came in and you know tipped our hat to that that man, that genius. Yeah, yeah. With melody and composition and production. That yeah. man, and and man, it's it it'll if you allow it, it will come through you, and you know most of the time. Uh, you really don't have anything to do with it if you submit, you know, you, you play what you heard, you play it how it made you feel once again, and it will mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Interesting story, man, about how, you know, you know, he went from jazz drummer, you know, to the R&B. I'm going to ask him how he made that transition because there's some video on him, man. He had some hands on him. Whew, incredible. You know, you would, if you had that type of ability, I couldn't imagine you know, why you would want to do anything else because he was that good and you can right. listen to a lot of those records and hear it. Um, but the thing that I want, always wanted to ask him when I met, had the opportunity to meet him was the concept of uh, Serpentine Fire, rhythmic. Okay, okay. That's another one that, that messed me up because there was nothing else on the radio that was that African, you know, that had that kind of cut time feel to it. You know, everything, yeah. two, three, four. He came in and said, ah, um, um, ooh, ah, um. Yeah, ooh, whoa. Mm -hmm. So I was like, yo, how did that enter? He said, well, first of all, I'm a groove freak. You know, he said he's a groove. Guy, and that's obvious, you know. Um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Mighty Mighty, the opening track, that's real. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. hear it. But I asked him how, how that concept, and he said, man, I was watch, watching the movie Carmen, and um, you know, she's talking to Sidney Poitier, you know, and she's singing that song. Remember that scene? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh -huh. Boom, bing, boom. He started doing this, boom, bing, boom. And he started playing the battle on my chest. I was like, oh my God. Yeah, Captain, yeah. Walked away. I was like, that's genius. That's exactly. Yeah what it is you know so he his portals man for uh, information was wide open just as we are with all the stuff that we liked he took everything and pulled it together mm -hmm. and there it is that's what's missing and he mm -hmm. was right was it was it was it did you feel any pressure when you 
sat behind those traps from, you know, in the beginning? Were, were, did you feel pressure? You know what I'm saying? Like you were filling some big shoes or how how'd that feel to you, man? Not until the first gig. <laughs> I didn't feel any at all until I realized how important it was. Yeah. You know, once you get on the bandstand, it doesn't matter, you know, you know, how long you've been playing or how many chops you have. It's yeah, yeah. exactly what you said. People understand what they're coming to hear and they expect to hear it. They understand what those records are like. You know, that there was some intelligent music, a lot of tricky stuff in there. So there weren't like, you know, the, uh, the, the you know, nursery rhyme type fans, but there was some, you know, nursery rhyme type lyrics underneath a lot of integral, uh, intelligent type of voicings and composition. So my first gig is when I felt it, you know, I'd been a fan probably since that record right there over your shoulder, you know, the earth. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, in a weird way, it didn't really even affect me until the first show. So it took me actually a couple of years, honestly, to settle down. Good for you, man. You, you know that, yeah, hey man, I could stage fright, man. I'm like that first day of school, I'd have been, my sockets have been rolling down, man. You know what I mean? That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, like most of my friends were on that gig. You know, I had a lot of support and okay. um, God that they, they gave me that time because, you know, honestly, you know, I was coming in there doing what I thought people expected drum wise and you can't really ever eclipse that. So, you know, Philip actually uh, gave me um, some information that probably saved my job, you know, because he, he saw that I was, you know, having you know, like that one vertebrae is out. It only takes that one, but you can still tell somebody's sitting a little funny. It's expression. Mm -hmm. He could feel it. He could tell, you know, because oh, the yeah. rhythm, you know, and the, the feel of the of each musician is like a ripple, man. You throw that pebble in and it eventually gets to the singer over there or the bass player over here. Wow. So he wow. And I played for him in his solo band and he knows that I could do it. So he came up to me and he simply said, listen, Jay, we know you can fly. Oh, look at that. Oh, <laughs> wow. Look at that. Yeah, my man, what's, right? Which one? What's that with the first one? What's the name of that one? This is, this is Inside Out. Okay. Okay. Inside Out. Yeah. And then He's, this is Continuum, yes. right? I, I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not trying to distract you, man. I'm just trying to add a little flavor to this. So you don't have to get distracted by me, man, pulling records out, man. It's just, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go ahead, brother. Came up on the bandstand, and you know, it, nobody could hear me, but he did it like this. He said, Hey, Jay, listen, we all know you can fly. Just be honest and play the moment. Mm, play, wow. Play, play what it is that is appropriate for the moment. And then he walked away. And it was, to me, it was like he was floating. You know, it was like some Yoda stuff or something because I absolutely wasn't doing that. I was trying to give them information, you know, that I was practicing and I wanted to inspire them. And I'd never done that in any organization that I'd ever played in before. I always came so, in, so, you know, con what, so, what, what? So what, when, when you heard him say that to you, what, how did you interpret it? How did, what was your interpretation of that? You know what I mean? Loud bell went off, ding! You know, uh, what we do sometimes in, as musicians is we just wanna um, really get on the stage and spray and show the audience that we're growing, which is what we right. all do. You have to continue to give yourself information. But right. when it comes to, to belonging in an ensemble, in a band where things fit together, you have to you have to do what is required in your position, whatever that right. part is. And what you know, Reese, Freddie, and Ralph did to those records was made it feel real good. Right. And that was is was that's my love. That's really my gift. That's really where I contribute, you know, in, mm -hmm. in and I'd gotten away from that. And the moment he said that, I understood where I had to get, what pocket I had to get back in, because, you know, what that is at that moment, you know, you might be inspired by something else, but if you're honest 
and you just chill and realize that maybe sometimes just a little color there and a little color there, even though to you, it feels minuscule in your contribution, is exactly what's needed. But to mm -hmm. the audience that's receiving it, they're seeing the entire canvas. So Absolutely. to them, it's like, whoa, that was beautiful. So if, if um, you know, if we would come out of ourselves and, you know, just let, you know, the individual contribution, you know, ego and I'm just the greatest whatever go away and, mm -hmm. and to the love of composition, the actual, you know, we love this song, we love how that, you fall in love with that, then you'll be fine. And that's mm -hmm. when I began to settle down and go, got it, got it, thank you for that. I, I, I repeated that story to him, he don't even remember saying it, which, which mm -hmm. is also really cool because that meant, you know, we, we were being spoken to from a higher place, so. That might have been Reese tapping him on the shoulder. Yeah, you know, so. yeah, yeah. A, spir a spiritual thing. Let, let me. Let me want to share a story with you too. I know. I know we kind of chatted about this because I just got some information just recently. Because uh, Philip, he did a he did an autobiography, right? Did he write a book? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah see, so someone just kind of contacted me yesterday because I've been trying to get clarification. My my memory's not a hundred percent, but I you know I need little puzzle pieces put back into things. And I know you've probably heard this story, so I'm gonna add another layer to this story, okay? So this is the story about Earth, Wind & Fire's first gig, right? In Washington, D.C., let me just say. This is, this is the gig where I heard that they kind of left the stage with their tail between their legs, right? And so I wanna just also add a couple little, little clarification to this too, because I was at that gig, right? Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that was like beauty to me was when Maurice came out. Mm. Oh, you got one of those too. <laughs> Come on, so, yeah, Come so, on. I, I had to practice that, man. You know what I'm saying? So that well, that Af good. that African rhythm that he brought was huge. You know. Even, even like I, the first time I saw this, I was like, what, what is that? You know what I mean? He had, he had it hooked up and you know, like, wow, what is that, right? And he yeah. came out. And so I remember sitting there at this particular gig, right? Now, the place probably had 10,000 people in it. Of course, everybody was really in anticipation of George and Clinton, because they, you know, DC loved Clinton, right? So. One of the things that I'm sure, you, I don't think you really had this hostile audience that, you know, cause y'all are headliners, man. So you don't have people coming in and say, we want to see, they would come to see you all. But what happened, one of the things that had happened and is George, George used to, what they used to do, man, they used to have so many people coming on the set. They would pay people around DC to hand out flyers, right? Yeah. So they would hand out flyers prom promoting their shows, right? So one of the things that happened was they started handing out these particular flyers. And I don't think that certain people knew that Earth, Wind & Fire was on the bill, right? Mm. So what happened was people, you know, you had a couple of local bands playing and they were ready for P-Funk. And then all of a sudden this group comes out, it's like the elements of the universe. And it's like, we want George Clinton, you know what I mean? And so people were kind of like, hey, bring on George Clinton, bring on, yeah, they're cool, you could, they're cool and stuff like that, right? And so, so, this this is the show man 1973 okay this is this is the show they didn't make the bill right i don't ask me why but this was the blanket concert from 1970 now let me just let me just show you this too hold on Chamber ticket Brothers. prices ticket prices four dollars i don't know if with oh. those prices man i don't know how y'all got paid you know four dollars with ticket price man <laughs> right? no. so so Our Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, at the Armory, man. So it was a blanket oh. concert. So what happened was a lot of people was like, who is this group? You know, hurry up, let's get to George Clinton. Let's get to George Clinton. So they, Air Friend and Fire didn't make the cut, man, on the, on the paper. So a lot of people, yeah, they didn't make the bill, man. Incredible. Yeah, oh. so, so like for me, I was there and I thought it was an amazing show, man. You know, Verdine just had on jeans, shirt off, you know, the, the kalimba yeah. going. Jessica yeah. Cleves, you know, it, it, it's like, it was an amazing show, man. I have to tell you, that's me. So you can tell Philip that I was one of the 10,000 that was like, 
yo, who is that? They they are hot. You know what I mean? They, they, yeah, yeah. Without a doubt, man. You know what I mean? But you, like I said, John, you got some big shoes to fill. You've done a good job at it, man. You've been at this since 2001? Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Early 2001. And um, uh, thankfully, you know, we were, you know, my group, my guys, my brothers, Eddie, and, you know, particularly Eddie, that's my guy. You know, I joined yeah. the you know, band. He was leading back in the early 80s, like 81 or so. We were blessed enough to be mentored by um, by those guys, you know, via another good brother of mine, rest in peace, uh, Robert Brookins. And so we had a, a long relationship with those guys, and they've always been really good to us. But, you know, still the impact of getting a call for the audition was, was yeah, it was still. Where, 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 where were you, man? What were you, what were you doing when you got that call, man? How did that make you feel? Woo! Okay, so I <laughs> I told this story before, and um, I was I was excited about this record that I was doing, um, in Phoenix. I was in Phoenix, Arizona, mm-hmm. at a uh, recording um, man Chatone Studios. It may have a different name now, but I was in a rock band with these prolific rock uh, writers, rock guys. They were incredible, man. And the, the songs they were coming out was like phenomenal, man. So, you know, I'm excited because, you know, I had a little more hair back then, you know, I was going to be the black dude in the rock band, you know, so mm-hmm. I was excited about that. And if you know anything about Robert Brookins, he's a prankster, funny guy, most in, talented guy, you know, that I've ever met in and out of the studio, but he's a jokester, you know, so he introduced me um, to most of these guys from the gate. So I'm like, okay, I know a couple of the guys. And, and then when the audition came up uh, for, uh, for Philip, they called me and I played for Philip. So I know these guys, you know, you know, we're cool, but it ain't like, you know, the earth, it's just a whole nother entity, right? So I'm never even thinking that opportunity is coming. There's, you know, no matter what, I'm just not thinking. So I'm in this record, uh, doing this record with these guys. And, and the reason how Robert knew where I was is because it was the same studio that we all recorded the Wayman, Wayman Tisdale's records. Mm-hmm. Recorded with him. So he he had a line on me, called me up, said, hey, man, um, uh, we got a situation out here. I need you to come out here and play these drums. I'm like, word, what, what's, what's going on? I'm, I'm thinking the whole time that he's thinking, you know, I'm thinking Philip. I'm like, okay, well, when, when is it? You know, and then he starts talking a little bit more. And then I'm like, hmm, so it sounds like a Philip gig. It's like Japan, you know, we're always going over, overseas, you know, and he's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. This, this gig, uh, this festival in Fresno. I'm like, okay, bad. I'm still not getting it. I was like, when? He's like, no, we need you to come out in, in like three days and do this. I was like, I'm still not really feeling anything because I don't know. It's a whole hour and 45 minute show of Earth. If I'm still not getting that. Right, right. So uh, I'm going to send you some uh, blah, 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 some records, some recordings so you can learn all the intros and like, he knows, already knows the intros to Phillips. So I'm like, what is he talking about? I was like, whoa, what are you talking about, man? You know, like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, yeah, we need a drummer to come out here, Earth, when he fire. I was like, hey, man, look, stop playing with me. I'm doing this work. <laughs> I hung up, hung the phone. <laughs> he calls me back. Oh, I'm serious. I was like, Rob, look, man, I don't have time for this. You know how I feel about them. Don't play with me like that. That's not funny, right. dude. Right, I'm right. In. Now he's pissed, right? Because I'm hanging up on him. And this is how you know God was, uh, as always, from you know, inception, had been doing me like this. No, young man, over here. I'm pretty good with voices and hearing tones and stuff. And I heard he was in the cab with Philip at the time mm-hmm. here in New York somewhere, I don't know. And Philip says, Tell him if he can do it, we're gonna stop looking. I was like, Whoa, what? Yeah, 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 yeah. You you know, it was almost equivalent to like being in the deepest trouble you can imagine. You know how that, that cold feeling runs through your yeah. Whole- oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Like, man, we're gonna stop looking, so my chances are real good. What if I don't come up? I mean, all this stuff was like going through my brain before I even gave him the address to send the CDs. So man, I I I, I still feel it to this day you know, what that felt like to get that call. 
And um, they trusted me enough without a rehearsal uh, to play a gig, to play a show. Really? You know? Wow, wow. It was July 4th, I'll never forget it. And um, I guess I did okay. I don't even remember that show. I, to be honest with you, see, it was uh, that intense, you know. That's and deep, I, man. That's deep. So much woodshed that all I wanted to do was at least start the songs out right. We're going to start them out right. Anything in the middle, um, you know, I might be a little questionable about. But I knew those tunes really well. But, yeah, man, I, I can't even recall a moment one specific moment in that that show because I was just like <laughs> I'm playing man that's Verdine right that's my oh man yeah my mind was blown. Does, does your does your your knowledge of the song come from when you used to listen to some of this stuff or is it a familiarity or what where did that come from? Yes absolutely you know from from listening to it as you know when they first came out and you know I was at most of the shows that I could go. So I had mm -hmm. both concepts um but here's the thing that that um really helped me um back in the day when they used to do arenas um back to back like yeah. multiple shows yeah I, yeah me and my, me and my buddies got lucky uh and got tickets to another show so we getting excited we coming down the first tier third or we're almost up at the floor, like the stage is like right here and we coming down, we coming down. And all of a sudden the audience is this way, right? We start doing this. They were selling tickets all the way around every seat. Uh -huh. Now we back here, we in the back. They had some speakers, but of course it wasn't, you know, the audio wasn't anywhere near like it was in the front, but we could still right. hear. But I'm, I'm in the back now and I can see Freddie and Ralph from the back. And I could see how they were approaching it, what kind of timbre and, and discipline and energy and dynamic. I could see how they were approaching the gigs as drummers, two of them. And you know, by the way, you've never seen anything that intense in your life. That type of energy unsurpassed. It was amazing. Uh, well, maybe except for Mr. Brown, but yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe in the middle of that you know, with, with all those uh, songs and stuff that, that we love, changed my whole approach to the, to the drum kit when I saw that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Completely flipped it around. Mm -hmm. Had you, so so after, at that point, having become more familiar with them, you didn't really have the like first day of school jitters when you had to sit down there, right? Because you, you had that familiarity as a drummer, right? I mean, that's a, that's a big, see, I, I kind of panicked the first day of school, right? But your job, man, you can't, you can't really do that because you're the heartbeat. If, if you just yeah. totally forget it, yeah. it's done, right? You know what I mean? That's a lot of pressure, brother. No question. The thing, um, I didn't have the panic. The panic thing was, you know, I was, you know, ready you know i had already done some pretty cool stuff you know and the most pressure as far as that's concerned was was with the Patti labelle gig because from night to night we never knew what was going to happen but i was still insecure about it because i understood how drummers fans you know any musician felt about that chair and mm -hmm. um, i had to put that out of my brain and and just um approach it from the standpoint of my love of music because you know you know, there has been a point where, you know, most of us have gotten removed from a band. Yeah. Uh, embarrassed by it. I couldn't believe it. But you grew from it and you didn't stop because your love of music was more important than your, you know, being embarrassed about being fired from something that you weren't doing. So mm -hmm. I, I um, overcame it, the judgment part and the ex expectation and uh, of all of that by just loving it. You know, because there was nothing that was going to eclipse that. I loved the music so much. And, mm -hmm. you know, opportunity came to me out of anybody in the world. That's like, come on, man. You can it, you can give it, you know, a shot, you know, and let mm -hmm. them understand that you love it without, you know, being intimidated so much. But, yeah, it was, it was a whirlpool of emotions <laughs> that had to be overcome. So, and, you know, but saying that, I still go into it with that same appreciation. You know, no matter how long we've been off, it doesn't matter. It's still Earth, Wind & Fire. It's still a brand that's respected 
yeah. you know, it's an expectation. So I, I uh, continue to approach it that way. Does it does it ever does it ever get to a point where you feel mechanical? Do you ever have mechanical moments? No, not at all. <laughs> Never. Okay. Um, some some of us do, but um, you know, I I um I consider it such a, a huge miracle that I'm playing drums with anybody. Okay. At all, and and survive in this game that. I refuse to allow that to come in. Now there are some moments, you know, where it goes, okay, uh, you snap out because okay. you know, I was born in Trenton, New Jersey, you know, in circumstances that, you know, uh, would allow any young black man fatherless to fail. Mm -hmm. um, but I had a praying grandmother, as I like to say, and a lot of other support bounced around and ended up in California years later and got the call. So, you know, there's a whole gang of tentacles that remind me I could even be, you know, in jail with one of my best mm -hmm. friends, Trenton, who's in jail for murder for life. Mm -hmm. Here. Mm -hmm. I don't have the, uh, the opportunity to be mechanical. Can't do it. You know, it, it, mm -hmm. I not allow that. Yeah, yeah. John, do, do you have any, uh, like, I know you're kind of doing your own thing and you're writing and things like that right now. Obviously, we're all at home, so we're, we're you know, forced to do things that outside of the box, thinking outside the box. You have yeah. any dr drummers that you really just like, wow, this, this, you know, I just admire these people. Do you have any, you have a list of people like that, man? Man, I should have wrote them down because there's so many. There's so many. Okay, well, let me let me let me do this here. Let me let me just I just, and you don't have to make it. You don't have to make this a long, long, long thing here. You can give me just like short answers. Now I'm I'm more from the fusion standpoint of it, right? So you know, obviously here we, let's talk about Chicago, right? <laughs> yeah, Mr. Seraphin. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So that record, right there, was um my uncle's. My uncle had that record. And uh, I certainly almost played the grooves off of that one, for yeah. sure. So, you know, outside of, you know, our guys that, you know, like we like with, you know, Cozy Cole, Philly Joe Jones and Billy and all the jazz drummers, you know, um, Danny was like my guy in, in, in the mm. chop. And, you know, he had chops in, in the pop music, you know, he, they let him yeah. play and they played yeah, those yeah. on pop radio. So yeah, he was definitely one of the guys for sure. Yeah. But, Hearing hearing a lot of the Afro-Cuban stuff out of New York, I was always drawn to the percussion side. Right. So, you know, there was there was a lot of um, that kind of stuff that came out uh, of the East Coast. But when I came to Cali, the first pe person that I looked up was the Escovito family. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I start. <laughs> yeah. <we> <laughs> right. Yeah. You know, that's a winner. That's a winner. And yes, my uncle had all that stuff because he loved Santana, you know, yeah. so he had all those records, man. And uh, I would go and sneak in and watch them play and just take it all in, you know. Mm -hmm. but, but the old school drummers, man, like like we were talking, you know, in, in the 70s, um, before, before the fusion stuff came in, you know, with Billy, uh, Cobham and, and Lenny White were really teaching us how to play the drum kit. Yeah. When we were listening to all this jazz and then it was always a James Brown record I would defer to, uh, I heard the first record Tower Power did called East Bay Grease. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. That right there? Yeah. Put it all together for me because I knew it was, you know, was yeah. possible. Pro Props to Tower, props to Tower. You know, yeah. this is not the album you talk about, but props to Tower. Yeah, Tower. yeah. Mr. Yeah. John David Garibaldi yeah. was, was playing, you know, all this stuff. I mean, you could hear the James Brown, you could hear some of the Afro Cuban, the clave stuff. You, and he was, he's just so funky. To this day, man, that guy effort, is effortless, the funk king, you know. So I'm yeah. like, yeah, that was another record that, you know, 
put it on. I was like, I'm going to figure this out. I got to learn how to, I want it to sound like that too. I don't want right. to just do a song. I want, I want to figure out what it is he's doing because that's, you know, influencing everything else around him. Do you, do you put a lot of, when you put, when you were younger, did you put a lot of time into that? Like really just trying to get that sound of, how does that work? How does that work as a musician? And do you just put the record on and start listening to it and just, how does that work for you? How do, how do you get that? And I used to dissect records. You know, it didn't matter who, how many musicians was on there. I would be in on one instrument, play it from front to back, and mm -hmm. just focus on that one guy all the way. Okay. If he did one lick that was different, wherever it was, I knew it was coming. Go back and listen to the drummer. Got mm -hmm. it. Back and listen to the bass player, however many times I'm going back and listen to this keyboard player here and see what he's doing. Oh, there's a synth part coming. Let's go back. Let's listen. And that's how I would, you know, interpret how I would make it feel playing drums. You know, mm -hmm. the, how intricate the drum part was, you know, I would listen to that several times, but I would dissect every part. Mm -hmm. you know? Sure, you know, that I was being honest about what I was playing when we would go play a song somewhere. Mm -hmm. But yet, just dissect it. I would mm -hmm. do that. Probably to a fault today, but, you know. I still... why, why, why you say that to a fault, though, man? What, what, what makes you say that? Because I've been blessed to play with, you know, people that have been in the game for, you know, 50, 55 years. And mm -hmm. sometimes they want a little breathing room. You know, they was like, okay, uh, we don't, do I have to play that lick right there? Your eyebrow going up in the air if I don't do the same thing I did 50 years ago? You know, right, right. And my back is, well, not every time, but I throw it back on the crowd. They expect it. You know, that's that's how I get yeah. away. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Cause, cause that one of, the, one of the things I've, I've heard you speak before, you know, obviously drumming in the pocket, you know what I mean? In the pocket that, you know, no, no frills in the pocket, you know, and obviously you've had a lot of experience, you know, with in the Prince camp and with Jesse, where you're just in that pocket, you know, you don't really step outside of that, like a Billy Cobham or Lenny, you know, that's yeah. all over the place. They they pocket it, but then I guess they fill it yeah. back into, right? Am, am I right? Yes, yeah. absolutely. And and the, the the difference between a drummer that can really, really play a lot, that has a lot of information, and stay in the pocket and then there's someone that can play a lot and and don't really enjoy being in the pocket you hear it you can mm. feel it more than mm. you can feel that they can't wait i'm just doing this just to show y'all i could do it old school kind of vibe rather than loving what that feels like you know to just sit there and make that thing feel good so that your next man can feel good, he can feel good, particularly in a big band like, you know, like an Earth and a Fire. Most of the bands that I played in, you know, we've always had at least nine, 10, 11 people in the band. So mm. if you got a lot to say, you know, from a uh, standpoint of drums, then you should pick that genre that will allow that, that that's where, you know, that is sufficient. But in most of the art, pop stuff that, that I love, you know, um, man, I have no problem with it. I'm drawn to it. Mm -hmm. the infectious, repetitive type of rhythm. That is okay. like, man, that, there's nothing feels that feels better to me than that. That's cool, man. We go, we, you know, we, we, we'll, we'll try to get you to a flashback to the time zone of when James Brown was in the pocket and when they had to play the same riff for an hour. <laughs> and then James would say, let's take it to the bridge. And then they'd be screaming, yeah, yeah. Let's take you to the bridge. Like we're gonna, we're gonna flash you back to that man and see if you had that same feeling, right? Take it yes, to the sir. bridge, John. <laughs> Clyde Stubberfield style. <laughs> Come on, yeah. with I, I got to spend my first year of school in New York. And we were out there, we were way out there, 120, uh, 80, 183. <laughs> we out there. P I went to PS77. But my aunt was taking me to the Apollo every week. Sometimes in the middle, wow. I've seen wow. everybody. When I tell you everybody, some of the names I don't even remember seeing. Give me, give me some names, man. Give me some names, man. If you said Jackie Wilson, what? Original Temptations, 
Dakota wow. Dayton, who was my my mother's favorite. Uh, of course, um, uh, Gladys Knight, you know, the Pips, uh, Ray yeah, Charles, yeah. original Ray Letts, um, Lil Anthony, the Imperials, you know, I mean, you know, golly, seeing that, you know, the, the Temptations was, oh my God. Yeah, yeah. The thing that, you know, that impacted me the most was when I saw Mr. Brown. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It was the most intense thing I'd ever seen in my life. And everything he did with his body meant something to somebody. Mm -hmm. Man, you could see it after a while. Even as a little kid, you could tell, you know, he would do an obvious cue and bam, you know. But there was, right. you know, just little stuff that he would do. You know, we see all these little intricate accents, man, and point that that drummer and he would take off and, and it was seamless. You couldn't yeah. even tell, even through tone, drum tone, that it was another drummer playing. And when, let alone when the both of them would play at the same time, at the end of that show, I was devastated. It was like, I bet days I could barely even describe it. I Couldn't, bet, man. Yeah, it was. It was. It was just. Wow. So I thank her to this day, you know, for exposing me to all that kind of, you know, that level of music. And you know, they weren't playing at the Apollo now. Right. Yeah. Not so. Not. not I'm not trying to divulge your age, man. But you were. You were young and younging, right? You know what I'm saying. You. You. You were holding grandma's hand. You were holding grandma's hand, right? They were doing me like this when he was dancing. Yeah, okay, okay, okay. Well, I was a little fella, but you know, it was that impactful that I never forgot it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Certain things, you know how you have scattered memories, you know? Yeah, absolutely. A vaccination, you know, because it hurt, you know, little stuff. That man's performance, you know, was so impactful that I've never felt that 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 that, that kind of a intensity until I saw Michael Jackson in 1981. Mm. Nothing in between even came close. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where, where, where did you, where, what was going on with Michael at that time in 1980? 81-ish, I think the, uh, hit, hit off the wall, first solo record. Okay. But he was okay. brothers when we saw this. Okay. And um, so, <laughs> yeah, funny story. Um, I was playing with Sheila Escovito. Mm -hmm. at the time and I was just at the house hanging out and she called real quick hey Scotty from the whispers got us some tickets to go see Michael Jackson get dressed click wow just like that and and be honest see I was like oh man, okay the last time I saw the Jackson's you know dancing machine you know the robot you know mm -hmm. big and I was a little jelly. I ain't gonna lie. I had a little jealousy about it. Like, okay, it was like popcorn to me. You know, I'm like, I hadn't really appreciated my <laughs> like I should have as a kid. And then now, now I'm like, I get it. But by that time, I understood what was going on because, you know, we were playing and uh, we went to that show. And of course, you know, it was just, it was so intense from beginning to end. But wow. the but the section that 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 you'll see, you know, you can see a lot. They did the medley, you know. Okay. Love you, save. Oh, let's do this. A, B, C, blah, blah, blah. And you can see the stage getting dark. And in the back, he had that chair with the hat on it. But you're not really focused on that because they don't allow you to really see it. But I'm like that dude. I'm going like this the whole time. <laughs> I'm watching everything. I'm like, hmm, that's interesting. What's he gonna do with the chair? And he's, yeah, you know, as the stage is getting darker and darker, he's kind of easing his way over to that chair. Yeah, I love those songs. Those were great songs. Yeah, but mostly, grab that hat. I love the new stuff. Boom, cat, right. boom. Man, dude, I, I left that horse. I was screaming. <laughs> <just> like, <laughs> Between Michael Jackson and Jonathan Moffat, the drummer that he had back then. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. And and you know, interesting. Interesting that drummer man. I mean, uh, as a consumer, for me, it's the whole picture that you talked about, right? The whole thing. Like I sit there and I hit the whole picture. For me, I didn't really notice how much of a strong drummer he was until Michael was gone, and then I've seen him just on YouTube, dude, I was like, wow. You know, that's what you're talking about. Like that whole picture yes. that you do, right? 
absolutely 100 and that's and as great of an entertainer as michael was he understood that you know no matter how much you could dance or fly around or do whatever the eye naturally wanders it's just going to do that so yeah. give them some eye candy give them some production give them this right. and that give them a flashy drummer give them whatever if, if it's about the show you know right and right solo he understood that too because you notice he had those dancers flanking him right yeah, I'm michael jackson but but eventually you know you you just naturally you start doing that and right. then I was back and forth between him and that drummer, man. I was like, oh my God. I, it was so intense, I almost changed my mind. I was like, if I gotta play drums like that to right, play right. clean, okay, I might be in trouble. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, like I said, I never I never knew he was that strong of a drummer until I seen it, like I said, videos like, whoa, he was, oh, okay, okay, I got it now. You know what I mean? Higher night. Yeah. Bring Eat at a level like up here, right? Know, probably losing weight after each show too. I bet, I bet, man, I bet. You know what I mean? When, when so when's the last time? I mean, I know we've all kind of been locked in the houses. I've been locked in the house since last March. When's the last time you all were on the road? Hmm. This is uh, February. Wow. I'm, I'm gonna say almost a year and yeah. a half, maybe a year and three months or so it's been okay. over yeah, even though it's not march yet we had some dates uh uh last march that we were going to start for the year but previous to that it had been a few months so yeah it's been a long time and, and i know you said you've had an opportunity to just kind of get back with your family your girl you know your wife and stuff like that how's, how's it affected you man how's just being at home affected you being off it's the road a little challenge because you know we're still trying to figure out ways to um to be creative you know and think yeah. out of the box and continue to play you know with the live streams and you know sending people files writing producing stuff now it's, it's starting to pick up a little bit for me but you know uh at first before it got really really tight you know we were still playing you know we would you know go uh to you know with some folks that we trusted and be maxed up in the whole nine but um, it's it's almost more challenging now uh, mm. than it was when it first um, popped in there because I don't think people really understood how serious it was until mm -hmm. it getting at home. So by the end of the year, you know, we had kind of pulled all that back, you know, and um, starting to do stuff via mail. So it, it's it's a bit challenging uh, uh, spiritually. You know, you, you have to force yourself to go out and get your melanin on, you know, get your son and yeah, uh, continue to uh, move your body, man, at all. So, yeah, a yeah. little challenging, but, you know, I, I, I'm, you know, looking back at my life, I'm just crazy enough to keep, continue to hope that something's going to change soon. Yeah, so we, yeah. Now, now I, I don't know about your environment, but do you have your drum set, you have set there with you? Is, 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 you you have a room with that kind of stuff? Absolutely, got to stay set up at all okay. times. So okay. I can go in there if I get an idea or if I see something interesting, you know, go in there and, and keep my brain going, you know, uh, particularly something challenging is that, that I'm not used to playing, you know, because I don't, I don't want to, you know, get early Alzheimer's, you know, so yeah, yeah. Brain. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's why, you know, that's like my music for me, man. Like I started, the, you know, the YouTube channel, the YouTube page, basically because a lot of these memories are implanted in me. You know yeah. what I mean? When I, when, and that's how music works. You know what I mean? We forget what happened last week, but if you put a record on for when you're 10 years old, you know, you're right there with it. You know what I mean? Yeah, so I hear exactly what you're talking about, man. It's amazing. You're so right. It's so yeah. right. The power yeah. of music, man. The power of music, you know? I was at a buddy's house of mine, you know, I think it was a 75 when that's the way the world came out. He's a drummer. My buddy, Roy Holly. Man, I wish I could find him. Facebook, I gotta get this. Yeah, Facebook. yeah, yeah, yeah. Drum sets at his house, you know, we go play, you know, and he would, you know, go at it with me and show me the church beats and then, you know, all this stuff. And he had that record, that's the way the world. And there was some incredible stuff on there, of course, one of my favorite Earth Wind Fire records. But mm -hmm. that's when the world came on. And it is, I don't know, it just hit me somehow. 
in my body. And when that record plays, that's the moment I go back to when I was in his house. Wow. In Denver, California going, wow. If I could just let that brother know, you know, how that affected me and that he and his family has something to do with the way I appreciate my gig right now, that would really do me good. You know, yeah. so I'm on a mission trying to find him right now. That's good, yeah. That's what Facebook's good for, man. Facebook is like a fishing expedition, you know? You'll, you'll, you'll come across me eventually, you know? <laughs> Throw yeah. that hook in there, just just wait, you know? It's gonna come yeah. back to you, you know? In Toronto, so, so Montreal is is west, right? Yeah, yeah, but Montreal actually, it's, it's kind of northwest. Northwest. Yeah, yeah. Okay. it's about, it's about the same distance from here to New York City, you know, four, six hours, somewhere in that area. From you? Yes. Okay, yes. I got you, because I, I got a line out on him, and my buddy said that might be where he is, you know, we might be mm -hmm. up there. So we're going to get on Facebook and see if we can find him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so let me let me just, just give me one word with, with, with you know, a couple words. Billy Cobb. Can I swear? Can I cuss? No. Yeah, you no. Can, no, no, don't cuss, man. We got to keep it for kids. <laughs> Billy Cobham, man. Just yeah, that's unfair, man. Yeah, phenomenal. Woo! Yeah, he 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 was probably the first one, you know, out of all the guys. There were so many of them, you know, Narda, Lenny, and everybody. Yeah, but Billy, man, Billy, Billy brought so much power along with finesse. He he was, <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, man. I'm gonna probably use that. Same word, depending on what you pull out next, man. Because you get yeah, yeah, okay, okay. <laughs> what you got, Tony Williams? It? Tony oh. Williams. Oh, yeah, the original. Tony Williams. He is yeah. man. I can't believe I haven't said his name yet. Woo! There's a there's some stuff on that that man right there that when he was 17, unequaled. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. My, oh man. Tony Williams. Let's see what word. I have to invent a word for him because he's okay. He, he's the guy. I'm gonna get back okay. to. <laughs> okay. Okay. Here we go. Oh, buddy. Oh, buddy yeah. Miles. Oh, buddy, man, were you aware of how well that brother can sing? I was, man. I was. Yeah. What an yeah. amazing talent, and he was playing and singing. Yeah. That's yeah. And that he yeah. was another one that if you didn't realize, you know, how deep he was in that pocket with the drums, he was singing lead. Yeah. True. True. That's a hard that's a hard thing as a drummer, right? Yes. Listen, yes. You, yo, man, I, I mean, I got a lot of admiration for you because you got a lot of stuff going on. I don't know, there's a lot of disconnects. It's like for me, man, I have a hard time driving and eating a hamburger at the same time, right? <laughs> Let alone let alone, you know, you got your feet going, you got your hands going, your yeah. brain's going, and then yeah. you got to sing. Ooh, it's yeah, tough. man. So it's um, well, we the drummers kind of like to try to think polyrhythms anyway, but most of the R and B stuff is, you know, pretty much straight up. You know, you either playing eight no quarters or sixteenths, and that's not so difficult. But okay. the credit that I have to give to back again to Sheila E. Okay. When we were playing with her, and now this is even pre pre Prince. We were writing songs and uh recording them, writing, practicing all day. And I co-wrote co this tune with her and um the drum beat was rather busy. Mm -hmm. 16th and um you know stuff going on with the bass drum. You know all of that only thing that was pretty consistent was the snare, the back beat, right? And mm -hmm. so collaborated on this background part, we started harmonizing everything. And now that rhythm was completely different from the drum beat I was playing. And the one thing mm -hmm. that I wanted to do with her was make sure that I was, you know, in the pocket, right? So she goes, yeah, um, yeah, I like the way you sing. So I need you to sing on this. I'm like, okay, uh, maybe we should give that part to somebody else. He's like, no, I want you to do it. One, two, and she starts counting off, right? I'm like, ah! And I, I messed it up really bad, but it took like days to separate that rhythm from what I was playing. But from that point on, anything else was, was cake, was easy. Okay. So I always give that credit to her because she made me do it like right on the spot. Y'all are still 
in, in contact and in touch and do things together. You all do things together. You'll be able to get rid of me. Yeah. She, you know, okay. I, okay. I owe so much to her, her and her entire, entire family. They took me in, you know, and, you know, there's, there's probably at least 500 honorary Escovitos because they're like, that. that's the kind of family they are. You know, they take you in and then once yeah. they love you, it's forever, so. That's good, man. That's good. That's good, man. A few months ago up in Oakland that she has a, um, a, um, a the thing she benefits, or what is it, Uplift Oakland. I think it was. I think I, think I, I think I clicked on that and saw that it was really I, well I, done. Yeah, 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 I didn't see that. I didn't see that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Really, really well done, man. Really well done. Okay, so well, I, I got I get just a couple a couple more records. I just want to get your reaction, and then we kind of wind down, right? So I, you know, I got I gotta pull these out, man. Cause okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, I don't know nothing okay. about that one. Come on, man. Come on, man. Come on, man. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Cliff. Oh my God. Come on, John. Come on, give me give me a couple words, man. Give me a couple yeah, words. First one, they both have to be blanked out. So you know, I, I'll just let you imagine where the, what those two words are. But you know what's <laughs> crazy in the Bay Area at that time, they were playing uh, "My Love Is Deep" off of that record a lot. Mm -hmm. They played that record a lot, so I knew who they were. And a few days ago, my buddy, uh, my buddy, my guitar player Bobby G, he was he was our band, reminded me. And I totally forgot about this, that I was actually lusting over Kathy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he told me that. I was like, man, come on. He's like, no, man, that was right there. And then he goes, you know, you married with me. Crazy stuff. And I barely have any recollection of it. But That's yeah, he crazy. reminded me of this, Cliff, like a few days ago. I was right. like, man, stop lying. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, here one, one more, man. One more. We gotta go here too. We gotta go here too, right? Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Resurgence too. Yeah. Right, 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 right. This is Shelly over there. Oh man, look at you, man. You got. Oh my God, I don't know, man. Somebody might come see you, man. Try to get some. Yeah, this yeah. I know you told me. Don't tell nobody where you live. Don't tell nobody where you live. <laughs> yeah. hey, you know the production on those records were incredible. I love it to this day. I love yeah. listening to that, man. Yeah, you know, we gotta give, gotta give, we gotta give props to the ladies, man. You know That's what I'm saying? The ladies in our lives, man. One hundred. I was raised by a bunch of women, so I look at it differently. Yeah, always acknowledge it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So look, man, let's let's wrap this up, man. So, so, brother John, if I don't know, you know, do you want people to get in touch with you? How you know how how, how you how you living, man? I don't know. You know what I mean? I'm giving you the space to just kind of. You want to reach out and I got a I got a text from my 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 partner, my production partner, Neil Poe. You have to look him up. He's everywhere. He's done all this stuff, records that you've heard, you know, from TLC to Outcast, you know. And he said, JP, get an Instagram account, man. Come on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I know, man. Facebook, I don't have nothing. But I'm absolutely gonna get on that. Um okay. I have to because there's a bunch of stuff that I have my hands in that nobody's gonna ever know about until I okay. get involved you know, with social media. So I'm on it, CB. I'm on it. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, uh, you know, I'm trying to get people to subscribe to my channel and stuff like that. I'm on Facebook, so you know, eventually we're gonna get this out there. And if people try to reach out to me, I'm gonna reach into you, and then we get yes. going there because technology. Okay. You know, we're old school, man. We're trying to we're trying to muddle through all this, brother. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. It, it's it's a challenge. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a challenge for all of us, man. You know what I mean? It's a yeah. challenge. It's a challenge. But John, listen, man, thank, thanks. Thank you for sitting down with me, man, and just having a conversation with me, man. You know, like I said, I didn't, I didn't want to bog you down with just the earth, wind, and fire thing. I just wanted to hear, you know, like what makes you tick, you know, yeah. your joys, your love of music. And you, you're a love of music, man. And props to you, man. Props to you, brother. Yes, sir. And, and props back at you, man, for doing this kind of thing, because I appreciate that so much to be able to uh, express that, because there's so many people that are part, uh, a major part of our journey getting here that means so much to us that people never even know about. And uh, we could do a whole nother two hours on just that alone. So, yeah, absolutely. I, man, you know, for uh, allowing this outlet for cats like me, man, and Props to you, bro. Thank you, man, for doing this. You're welcome, man. You're welcome, man. Thank you, man. 
All right, mama, I'm I'm gonna hit the unrecord button now. And, uh, <laughs> All right. You know what I'm saying? So thank you so much, John. I, I I really appreciate it, man. Thank you very much, man. And you all stay safe out there, okay? Much love to you and hope I can get my hands around your neck soon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right, my brother. Talk to you later, man. Thank you, brother.